I'm Lima Milan, and in this video we're going to look at external instrument devices. So to begin with, in Ableton Live, we're probably most likely used to using software versions of instruments or drum machines and so on. But before that, people had to use hardware devices. And nowadays, people also use hardware devices for their characteristic or, or their workflow and so on as well. So what we're going to try and do today is integrate some external hardware and get it to behave as close as we can to being an instrument within the software itself. So to do this, we've got a few things we need to do configuration wise. So I've got a MIDI track loaded in and what I need to be able to do is send MIDI data from that track to my sound module. So this is a TX7 Yamaha sound module. It can play one track of audio at a time. It can generate sound for one track. And then I need to get the audio out of that into my audio interface. So I've got the MIDI out of my audio interface because it has a MIDI interface too. I've got the, the MIDI out of that running to the MIDI in of my TX7. The TX7 doesn't generate MIDI data that I want to capture within Ableton Live. So I don't need to run another cable out of it into Ableton Live via the interface. It just needs to go one way. It leaves the MIDI track and it goes to the TX7. The audio needs to be returned. So that's coming out of here and then it's plugged into input one on here. So to do the external instrument device, first we load it in and we need to direct the MIDI data to leave the track and go down that cable that's plugged into the TX7. If it doesn't show here, you can go to the configure tab, find the relevant output you want to send the MIDI data um, out to. In this case, it's my Scarlet output for the MIDI and make sure that it's enabled for track so it can be used on MIDI tracks. The next thing we need to address is the MIDI channel. So this connection can have up to 16 simultaneous streams of data, and that could be 16 different tracks that are all sending different types of uh, musical content to a sound module. Now this one, as I said earlier, only plays one type of sound at a time. So it only uses one MIDI channel and based on the default settings of this, it's MIDI channel one. So I'm going to set that to MIDI channel one. Now the mid, the audio input, sorry, going from the TX7 to the audio interface is going into input one. So I need to select input one and then I can put in a placeholder piece of MIDI. So just a simple C3 going to loop that with command and L and then play that. Okay, so we've completed the actual audio and MIDI routing now. The next challenge is how we get it to be in time. So there's different latencies of the MIDI data going to the audio interface via USB and then the MIDI data leaving the interface and going to the TX7, how long it takes for the TX7 to listen to the MIDI data and then generate the audio, then how long that audio takes to then come back to the interface. So there's lots of different steps that can cause latency and a delay in the signal arriving, as we'd expect within our, our Ableton Live set. So we need to account for that, and that's what this hardware latency setting is for. If we're dealing with analog signals, we'll deal with milliseconds. So when we change our audio interface settings, it accounts and makes that the right setting, regardless of our um, audio interface settings. If we're dealing with a digital input, where we've used either maybe an optical or a, a SPDIF um, uh, digital connection from an external piece of hardware to the interface, we'll tend to work in samples because that's the measurement used for digital information. So in milliseconds, there's two different ways we can synchronize what we expect to be the MIDI note arriving at this unit and when it actually becomes the sound that arrives within Ableton Live. So the two different strategies for doing this, one could be by ear. So we turn on the metronome and if you remember, I've put in a C3 on the downbeat and it's just looping around on every beat. I've deliberately chosen a type of sound in this device that's quite percussive, so it has a clear beginning point to it. So you wouldn't use a pad or anything like that. Use something that's got quite a, a loud transient at the beginning. And then by ear, I'm just gonna listen and see if the metronome and the sound from the TX7 are in unison in terms of time, or whether there's a flamming effect where they're close, but they need to be slightly better aligned. And that's what this hardware latency setting is for. Okay, so by ear, it sounds around about the six millisecond mark, 
But the second method of doing this is a bit more precise. And in order to do this, what we need to do is actually capture the audio that's being generated from that external instrument device. And then going off that we know that that C3 note starts bang on the downbeat, what's the distance between the actual audio that's been captured? And then that's the bit we need to bring together to get these in, in time with each other. So I'm gonna create a new audio track. I'm gonna tell it to take audio from the external instrument track. Then I'm gonna hit record, so I've record armed it, and I'm gonna take that distance between that first note being told to start and how long it takes to actually become audio in the recorded track. One thing I forgot to do there was actually to set the hardware latency to zero because we are trying to align this in a different approach. So let's just do that again. So that's definitely set to zero, meaning that we haven't modified its timing yet. So hit record and capture that. Okay, so if we look at the actual event here, we zoom right in, there's a fraction of silence before the actual sound begins in the recording, and that's the, the delay that we're trying to get around. So at the moment, it's the reading down here, I can't point to it while I've got it highlighted, but look down at this point of the screen, you can see that the duration is actually three milliseconds. Now it's not a precise science, MIDI notes themselves don't come out of Ableton Live in a perfect timing and the device itself doesn't necessarily respond perfectly to the information that it's given. So there's always a slight deviation in time. So if I were to go for the next note, it might be that that time difference between there and then the beginning of that is slightly different. That's two milliseconds. So we can't be 100% precise on this, but we can get it as close as we can. So it seems like between two and three milliseconds is what our measurements show. So if we set that to three milliseconds. We'll do the same process again. I don't need the metronome on for this actually, so I'll turn it off. I'll just hit record and see if that gap has been brought so the actual audio lands on the beat. There we go, it's slightly ahead by a very small fraction of a millisecond, so that might be as close as we can get. You can actually punch in very slight decimal points of the, the number. So it could be that we put 3.2 in there. We try that. And we see if that's hitting a bit more closer. So that's how we get the actual, the sound to be in time. And then from that point onwards, we can be confident that the, the notes and the times that we give the notes to the device is when the audio comes back in time within our main project. So the external instrument is set up now. One thing I didn't mention in terms of the setup is one thing I have done is I've made sure that the actual gain structure of the analog signal leaving this is arriving at my audio interface at an optimum level. Now this will depend on the type of sounds you've got inside your device. So pick a preset that's quite loud and, and maybe bass heavy as well, something that's gonna really make the meters go up on your input. And then all I've done is I've gone for looking on the input there go into a point where it's peaking and it's showing that it's red and then backed off a few clicks back just to make sure that there's a tiny bit of headroom but I'm making sure that the signal coming into the audio interface is as loud as it can be to battle that noise floor that will always sit behind a signal when we're dealing with analog signals. So that's what we're doing in terms of our gain structure. So that's captured in here. If we find that maybe the nature of the loudness from this device is not consistent enough alongside our software instruments, we can use a software gain control to try and boost things up a touch based on what preset we might have loaded. But that input gain is really important to get a good clean signal going in. Okay, so we've got the MIDI information going into the device. We've got the audio uh, information coming back. We've now set the actual latency time. The next step is basically to save this. So it's recallable anytime and it could become part of a potentially bigger studio setup where every piece of gear has its own individual um, external instrument device with its own hardware latency offset setup. And then whenever you wanna use it, you just load that preset for that given device. So if I hit save now, I can save this as my Yamaha TX7. And now that that's saved, at any point when I'm working on my music and I wanna leave the software world and use some of my hardware, I can go to my external instrument presets and load in the correct preset for that device. It will talk to the correct MIDI output on the audio interface to talk to it, and it will receive the audio on the correct audio 
input on the device as well.